Welcome to the first week in this study, Identity Crisis. During the next four weeks, we're going to be exploring the concept of identity. Our identity as humans and our identity as Christians. And so just to get you thinking, I want to ask you the question, what shapes your identity? What would you say is your greatest identifying characteristic? For many of us, our identity is wrapped up in our work. Many of us would say, my identity is shaped by what I do. For others, your identity may be shaped by who you are, maybe in relationship to other people as a mother, as a father, as a friend. Some others, your identity may even be shaped by what you wear, whether it be a uniform or just the regular clothes that you put on each day. But all of those things, all those identifying characteristics you just thought of, all of those are subject to change, to go away. And if they do, if something changes there, often we would say we're going through an identity crisis. That term identity crisis was, was coined by the psychologist Eric Erickson. And the idea behind an identity crisis for him was saying when an adolescent goes through adolescence and makes it to adulthood without ever attaining a sense of self, they get to adulthood and ask the question, who am I? And if they struggle with that question over and over again, Erickson said they're going through an identity crisis. We use that phrase identity crisis in our uh, language in, in many ways, in a more general way. We would say that any time that we're struggling with that question of who am I, that we're dealing with an identity crisis. I don't know how many of you middle-aged men are driving around in sports cars because you went through a midlife crisis and we're trying to figure out who you were. Some of us also face more traumatic identity crises as well. If your identity is wrapped up in your work and you were to lose your job, you might find yourself wrestling with that question, who am I without my work? And even more traumatic is often our our identity is wrapped up in our relationships. If you are married and you were to lose a spouse, which many of you have to death, you may ask the question, well, who am I now without this other person in my life? We all face a variety of different identity crises throughout our lives. And as Christians, I believe that we struggle with an identity crisis as well, simply as being Christians living in this world. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll continue to unveil all the different ways that we face identity crisis, but today specifically, we'll be looking at who am I as a human? Who am I as a Christian? Which of those things are fixed, given to me by God, and which things do I change, and when do I change them? But we do say that we are Christians, right? We make that claim, I am a Christian. And that term Christian literally means to be like Christ. Now, as Christian people, we believe that if we make the claim, I am a Christian, that it actually means something. And even more so, it actually does something or it should do something in our lives. So we're going to see over the next couple of weeks that this identity we have as Christians is not something that we attain for ourselves. It's something that's given to us by God. Next week, we're going to talk more specifically about baptism, but really briefly, that's what Christians have always believed about baptism. That in baptism, God gives us a new identity. He claims us as his own. As Christians, we are given a new self, a new life to put on. And in baptism, we're born into this family of God. Throughout history, people that made that claim Christian were making a claim about 
who it is that they associate with, primarily. Throughout history, if you were to make the claim, I am Christian, what you are saying is, above all else, I am a Christian. All the other allegiances I have in my life are secondary. The claim, I am a Christian, puts an umbrella statement over yourself. It is your identity. All the other things that you do, the relationships you have, it's part of you, but it isn't you. See, those things are all subject to go away, but Christ will never let you go. Think about Christians who have faced or are currently facing persecution for their faith. It's estimated that Every year, there are around 100 million Christians throughout the world who face persecution for their faith. And approximately 180 Christians are killed every month because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Now, here's the remarkable thing. The reason for the persecution and the reason for death is that they will not renounce their faith in Jesus Christ. How is it that people can have such a strong faith such a strong identity in Christ when their lives are being threatened. I don't think that we could really ever fully comprehend that unless we were to face it ourselves. And I pray that none of us ever have to. But if you make the claim, I am Christian, it means that you are putting that identity, that allegiance with Christ primary and all of the other allegiances, whether they be social, political, or even family, come secondary. You see, if somebody's facing persecution for their faith, if somebody is being martyred for their faith, they realize that the only identifying characteristic that gives them any hope, the only thing that will last is their identity in Christ. Think about it like this. If you say, I am a Christian, it means that you are like Christ. And what did Christ do? He died and then he rose again. What is promised to you in baptism? In baptism you are promised that you're united with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. And what is promised to all Christians? Even though you die, there will come a day where Christ will raise you to new life. See, when your identity is rooted in Jesus Christ, you have hope not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but for all of eternity. I'm a Christian. I'm proud to say that I am a Christian and I realize the great gifts and blessings that Christ gives to me. This is what I claim. I just wonder how much that identity in Christ actually affects my life. Especially when I enter all the other arenas and deal with all the other allegiances that I have in my life. Am I really ready to always take that claim and that identity in Christ primary over everything else? This is what you're going to be talking about in your groups today. And I pray that you have some absolutely fantastic discussions as a group. And over the next four weeks, we'll keep diving into this concept of who are we as Christian people. Thank you so much for participating in this study and may God bless you right now.